guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Legends Untold and we have the Weeping Caves Novice set. There's multiple different sets you can get, but uh, in this one we're going to be showing you a little bit of how this game is played. Basically it's an RPG meets a card game in which you have the RPG elements of things that happen. There's going to be spaces on the board you can move to and things you can interact with. You'll be laying down tiles and or card tiles to which you'll be interacting with them in certain ways. There's also different characters you can take different weapons you can gain, different abilities you can utilize throughout the game. You'll be rolling dice in order to defeat minions that will show up randomly, and your objective is to clear the different scenarios in the time allotted. As events go through the deck, you're going to be flipping over cards and having to deal with certain things, and sometimes it's going to be a good thing or a negative thing or a neutral thing, and as you go through, different things will happen. You want to make sure that you can accomplish your mission before the time runs out, and if you do, you're successful and you continue to the next campaign mode. If not, you can simply play again, or I I guess you could just move on anyway if you want. Nevertheless, though, it is a mixture of the RPG card game variety. This one's a little different, a little more moderate in depth than most of the ones I've seen. Let's go ahead and take a look at what you get in the game and then how to play a basic idea of the game. So here we have Legends Untold, the Weeping Caves set, in which you're going to get the booklet and the rule booklet, one for the adventures and one for how to play the game. And additionally, of course, you'll get the box as well, which will hold pretty much everything you need for the game. You're additionally going to get all that you see here, a lot of stuff indeed. Stuff like locations, tokens that will associate your party, along with all other types of things that will be used throughout the game. A scout and a guard, which will symbolize your party formation. A ton of different uh, rules and conditions, how you do tests, the different locations and the different icons in general, along with your turn sequence and how you take your turns and your combat summary. I've also showing you guys three of the characters and kind of a base idea of how a game is going to look when it's all set up. You got a student, the farmhand, and the forge hand. There's also this evicted noble over here. Each player is going to get these three types of cards, which is going to be stuff like traveled and uh, arcane theory, along with something like a guard stance. This farmhand over here is accurate and dependable and tenacious. And then our forge hand here is uh, good at caving, smithing, and he's good at opening things. Additionally, every single player is going to get a weapon, like a rough bow or a worn axe or a rough spear. And uh, you're also going to have a readiness tracker. Generally, you're going to be bold, but if you succeed in certain ways, you're going to go to alert, which will give you a bonus of some type. And if you fail, you'll go to careless, which will give you a negative in some way. I've also went ahead and shown you there's a bunch of extra stuff in the game for all the different types of scenarios. It will tell you how to set up all these decks here. You can have the time decks, which basically when this is run out, you're done for, and you have to complete your mission, whether it's a success or a failure will depend on if you can do it before this runs out. And then you're going to get stuff like the items and the different different bad guys and all that kind of stuff that will be in this deck here, which is the question mark. There's the obstacles you'll have to deal with and things that block your way. Uh, you're also going to have the extra characters, a bunch of uh, these different types of scenarios, which is nice. It's going to tell you the uh, scouting the cave or missing adventure or find the stolen food. You're going to have to go into a cave and find an old man, all kinds of different things you'll need to do in the game. And of course, the locations you'll be utilizing as well. I'm just going to give you a very, very basic idea of how this game is played. You're going to have your party marker, and depending on if you have light or not, will determine which side it's flipped on. It will show you your basically the ambience of the room, whether it's light or whether it's very dark, and what you need to roll in order to succeed. You also set up your party so that somebody's going to be the scout, which will be in front, the farm hand will be in back, and the forge hand will be in the middle. This will associate for the different cards that you're drawing throughout the game. And you're basically going to be utilizing this board here as a map to where you want to go. And depending on where you want to go, will determine what you're going to be rolling throughout the game. You can also do some, some certain things that help you along the way, like do you want to uh you want to you want to go slowly and stealthily and if you do that it'll cost you time there's a ton of different things that will cost you time in this game camping uh healing yourselves moving through different areas if i choose to go through an area like this i'd simply take the next one here i'd look at these little feet symbols which are there and i'd go ahead and place it right there to show the next portion of the cave if you can move through whenever you have these red symbols you'll have to deal with them like an obstacle you'll flip over one of these cards here and then it'll say something like oh a treacherous bridge uh, and then it'll tell you each hero must make a test, and it says a grace test, and each character has these different attributes, charm, will, reason, handle, grace, and brawn, and then you have your attack stats and health stats over on this side. So we'll look, okay, this guy's got a grace of two, and so you'll be rolling die. Generally, you'll be rolling three die in this game to make tests. There are certain differences, whether you're alert. So for instance, when you walk into a room, you have to make the, one of these tests here, and you roll these three die, and if you, uh, if you did 
after you do a sneak, you'll get to roll an extra die. Whenever you are alert, you're going to roll four die, select the lowest and use that. Whenever you're careless, you're going to roll four die, select the highest and remove it. And when you're bold, you'll just simply roll your three die. And, and most other tests work very similar to that as far as the tests go, but they have different conditions as well. And the same will go for these this area here. There's other things that will also benefit you in certain ways. So for instance, this symbol here, if your character has that, it can get a benefit of some type, as well as the type of test it is, grace. This guy's got two grace. This guy only has one. That will give you benefits as well. You'll be rolling the dice, and it'll tell you, like, if you get a nine, uh, you're going to have to suffer this. The time symbol means you lose time. Uh, if you get one of these symbols, you'll take damage. If you do the really well, if you do it really well, it says one other hero can instantly succeed. That's very good. After all, heroes will complete this little task here. You'll remove it, and if you successfully push through this thing, you're going to uh, be okay as well. Unfortunately, if you don't not succeed this this area over here, you roll your die and you get. Uh, if, let's say this is a so this is the moon. So okay, we need a nine or higher. Well, if you did not get a nine or higher, you'd be, you'd be careless, which means your next rolls your rolls would be uh, rolling four and losing the highest. If you roll four or four the number or higher, if, if you roll the number. Uh, you're going to go bold, but if you roll four more than the number, you'll actually get to go to alert, which means you'll be able to roll all four of these die and remove the lowest. So being alert is very good. Passing the obstacle is good as well. These rooms are all going to have different symbols, like it's a beast room, it's a water room, and these things will affect the cards in different ways. There's also an encounter in this room when you flip over the deck until you find an encounter marked with the same symbol. And then it'll tell you, okay, one hero must test either their willpower or their charm, and then depending on what they test is how they're going to roll as well. And some of these are interesting because you'll be able to go from, it's a stage test, which means you start here and you need to roll a 10, and then you need to roll a 12, and then a 16. And as you roll and succeed, you're going to gain more benefits if you fail to down the line, you'll get a minus two time or minus a time. You'll gain a time, so on and so forth. There's things that can benefit you, and you can always choose to stop at a certain point. And if you fail, you'll have to go back one and end your stop. So if you get up to here, but then you fail, you go down one and you'll gain a time. So different events will affect you in different ways based on how you roll the die. There's also optional events too, like uh, you'll get to see certain events. Like okay, I'm gonna flip over one of these. There happens to be a rusted gate there, but there also happens to be uh, a master. Sh uh, let me see, not this symbol. Uh, th th there's different symbols that you can look for anyway, but they happen. This is actually supposed to be some kind of mushroom or whatever, but you'll have the opportunity to do other certain tests like this rusted gate here. But you can, if you do accomplish going through these areas, you can draw an item and with this, not this deck here, sorry. With this deck here, you'll be able to basically go through it until you find uh, an item card, and that card can then be utilized in some way. So progressively beating minions will get you items, as well as obtaining sp certain spaces uh, on the board will get you items as well. And you'll be doing it in, in different ways, whether you look at the top three and find all the items. Sometimes there's going to be booby traps in the rooms, and if there is, you're going to be in trouble. Here's a loot, shiny rocks and you have to deal with booby traps, but then you're also gonna just get to go to the next space here, and that's a moon symbol, so you'll draw the next location, and then you're gonna test the moon based on the little footprints, just like you would, so there you go. Test the room at the moon, must get an eight or higher, deal with another obstacle, whatever it might be, like a ceiling crush, and check the room for any encounters and other things like that, and continue throughout the game. Interestingly enough, too, there's combat in the game, obviously, and the way you roll is going to determine how much damage you take and whatnot. There's certain minions you'll have to deal with. Let's see if I can uh, find one here, like Goblin Drunks here, and it'll tell you based on the number of players how you need to roll and what happens to your party. Additionally, when you uh, utilize your abilities, you can simply turn them to the side. Sometimes they'll give you bonuses if you have those specific symbols that match up with on the board. If you take damage, you'll have to flip these cards over, and after you flip them all over, if you have nothing left to flip, your character is going to get wounded, and the way to come bring him back is in a campfire, which is also going to cost you time. Everything in here is going to cost you time, and in some way it's going to negatively affect you. How time works now. Time is interesting. As you go through the deck one time, two, three, on the fourth time, there's only four, you have to flip this over, and after everything has been resolved, you'll have to do it, go ahead and resolve this event, Then there's only three cards left, and so usually you'll have to shuffle the deck up and continue that way, so you only have a limited amount of time as you progress throughout the game. So making the choices to sneak and uh, making the choices to heal and whatnot are gonna be very important. Also, every time you go from one card to another, you can switch up the uh, scout and the guard. And basically the scout's gonna decide whether or not you sneak 
because he's going to be in front. And the guard is going to be affected by other cards, as well as the character who's in the center. You've got certain things like your rough bow that can actually get uh, its string snapped, or you have the worn axe, which can get broken in certain ways. You can also upgrade your stuff as well, and there's also additional stuff in the game that will let you upgrade and whatnot. So the characters are multi-dimensional and change. It'll tell you all these different things, how to utilize everything, which is very nice, and it gives you enough tokens in the game for anything you're going to come across throughout all the different campaign scenarios. There's a ton of different stuff in the game, and I just want to give you a basic idea, a basic run-through as to how it kind of works. You'll be moving along through here, trying to engage the story. There's different successes and fails. If you actually look into the book here, let's go ahead and see if I can find a quick one. Um, where are you? Find you, find you out. There's the scenarios here, I think. It'll tell you a success or failure anyway. I, I can't seem to find it really quick, but it, it'll tell you uh, this this event. You have to do this specific thing, reach this specific location before the time deck runs out. If it runs out, you lose. And then if you successfully accomplish that, you can go on to the next one and more and more things will happen to you. And yeah, the game is really, really interesting as to how all of these things come together. It sounds like there's a lot, but once you get going, there's a very specific way in which you can do things. It also gives you the ability to have a DM added to the game if you would like to make it more innovative and interactive, or if you don't want to throw in the RPG element, you can simply play it as a RPG style card game. Anyway, that's the basic idea for Legends Untold The Weeping Caves book. Most of you guys are probably getting this game right now, which is pretty sweet, right? Along with a bunch of other content, which we'll actually be getting to test out shortly. But uh, hopefully that's enough information for those of you who have not seen the game or did not back it. Let's go up and talk about the game and what I thought of it. So a couple caveats for Legends Untold. And the first one is I gave you a very vague summary and I hope I gave you most of the rules correctly, but there's a lot to go through. In fact, they actually have really nice and easy quick turn references. So I was scouting and then the adventure and then you explore and then you can rest. There's also combat sequence where you choose your attacks, you complete your range attacks, then you complete your melee heroes get to go first. And then you check your morale. Sometimes enemies will run away if they have a break point, so on and so forth. All the enemy cards have their health and based on the number of players, whether they have a break point and whatnot, they all have different flavor text on them, and then they're specific whether they're ranged or not, and all that kind of stuff. So there is quite a lot. The conditions, too. You got fire, fear, and poison. It tells you all the icons. There's a lot of icons in this game, but really, they're all very easily condensed on here. As you're playing the game, it gets simplified, but explaining it is actually rather challenging. So hopefully I'll be able to do a live play of this with some people and make it kind of an RPG tabletop experience. This game is a very nice compromise between RPG playing and a tabletop game. You get a little bit bit of both worlds, a little bit of a mix. And it's nice too because you can kind of lean towards one way or the other way depending on how you feel. Now I am less of an RPG player and more of a tabletop gamer, so this game worked really well for me to kind of get me introduced into RPG gaming. However, uh, luckily I will be starting to do some more RPG stuff in the, in the next coming month or so. I'll be doing some one-shot campaigns. It's been a, a long time coming, but uh, I hope to be doing that. And this is kind of the game to get me involved with that, being able to do some role-playing and whatnot. All these different scenarios as well intriguing and interesting different moves in combat and all that kind of stuff you'll be able to use all your different abilities the fact that your characters can get wounded but you have time to rest and realistically the only thing in this game that matters is time as these cards go through you'll deal with different events like a gas fire or darkness a hidden tunnel enraged bats and it'll tell you what happens and it affects certain locations all the different boards have different location things all the cards also tell you what you need to know like beast locations do this water locations are now flooded etc etc and you can look on the board and it's very easy once you understand all the different uh, intricacies of all the different cards so for you rpgers out there this is going to be probably actually a little less complicated than D, D and all that kind of stuff whereas for you board gamers it might be a little bit more complicated or complex unless you're a strategy gamer or a euro gamer then you'll probably pick this up fairly quickly it's not that complex but for those of you who are more into the gateways this is going to be more on the medium to heavy end as far as it goes. It's a very exciting experience. I really felt like the story was engaging me throughout as I continued to go. I was nervous constantly about time. We were always very worried that we we're going to run out of time. We never wanted to make too many sneaks or do too much of this or that because it was always going to cost us and we may or may not have made the scenario complete if we did not successfully manage to go through it. Additionally with the, the actual game when you're playing it you'll be shuffling the uh, 
the events and whatnot, the time deck, and different events are going to pop up. Additionally, more cards are going to be introduced into the game depending on the scenario, which also is very intriguing and changes the game constantly. Uh, I'm very excited to see what else they come out with with this game. This is a very solid game for those of you who are RPGers and those of you who want to wet your whistle in the board game industry with basically the other reviews I've done before, like one deck dungeon, that kind of stuff. Those are very, very minimal style RPGs, a very nice like appetizer. This one here is almost that main course that you need, but still gives you all of the variety on cards that you can play straight up and you won't have to do that uh, role-playing aspect of the game. Overall, a very solid experience. I really enjoyed my time with this game. I'm gonna be trying to get this out on, on, on the field for a, a tabletop playthrough or a live play or something like that because I think this is gonna be really engaging for an audience as well. I really enjoyed this one. Definitely check out Legends Untold if this one sounds like it's something that interests you. And if not, let me know in the description why, what would make this game more appealing to you or maybe how I could explain it better. Thanks for watching us, and always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time in the Untold Legends of the Weeping Caverns.